of a of a topic to cover. There was an article that popped up this week, and and a, and a comic buddy also messaged me about it yesterday. So I I, I do want to talk about it. The article was titled "Comedy and the Alt Right Problem" or or something along those lines, or the alt right problem in comedy, um, some something something like that. Basically, it talks about these conservative comics, um, and a lot of these conservative comics very much preferred someone like Gavin McInnes. And uh, Gavin McInnes, who was part of the Proud Boys, uh, this is it. This is like a world class fucking idiot. Um, I don't think he has anything good to say. <laughs> I've listened to some Gavin, Mc I, like I listened to Gavin McKinnon's Ted talk about how like collectivism doesn't work, man. It's about the individual bro. Everything good that's ever happened came from an individual An individual make the fucking, uh, make the fucking shit and the world go round. It's like, really did fucking Steve Jobs go into the factory and work alongside his work. No, he sat in an office with a fucking turtleneck and he said, what if we put all of the, um, all of, all of the songs into a rectangle chop, chop. And that's what happened. Gavin McCann is, is, is like, in my opinion, a world-class idiot. <laughs> But some of these comics, they 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 champion him because he is unfiltered. Let's call it. Um, by which I mean he uses a lot of racial epithets. He says the n word and a bunch of other shit. And they go, "Oh man, this guy is not weighed down by by political correctness, which is censoring everybody." And it's like political correctness is not censoring everybody. Political correctness just says, "Hey, there's some words that are incredibly demeaning and dehumanizing to." A large groups of people so maybe we don't use those words maybe we evolve as a society to look beyond needing to use those words and there's been this push um from what i see as con more conservative comics um to to basically be able to use that word and i'm not talking about like i don't know i'm not talking about the people that are that talk about just the everyday things, right? Like going to the grocery store or what have you. Uh, I'm talking about people that go on stage and they are crass and, and what they call cringe for the sake of being cringe. They're, you, you know, like I think big J Okerson, I've met big J Okerson and everything. Um, I found his stories to be funny. Are they clean? Are they politically correct? Absolutely not. He is very crass and he is crass for the sake of crass. And that's fine. There are other comics that are also crass for the sake of crass who do believe in the things that Gavin McKinnon's uh, and, and the Proud Boys and, and groups like that espouse. And their comedy very subtly will reflect it because they can't go on stage and talk about disparaging minorities and talk about how America is a white country and henceforth you have to follow white people's rules. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> that sort of stuff is very, very far right wing and it's very, very difficult to make that sort of stuff funny. The issue I have with conservative comedy is this. Um, I have I have very seldom seen a very good conservative comic, and I know conservative comics exist out there, but conservative comics that I've seen are like the blue collar boys, right? They're kind of they kind of lean more conservative, but they're subtlety in what they say. They don't come out and make anti socialist jokes, whereas very lefty comics will make anti capitalist jokes, right? Speaking truth to power, that sort of stuff. I would love to see a pro-capitalist comedian. <coughs> Excuse me. That talks about, um, you know, the follies of socialism or whatever, whatever the topic is. Usually what ends up happening with conservative comics is, or, or rather conservative comics that I have seen, is that they become disparaging. Uh, they punch down on minorities, um, and they want to go to the old way of doing comedy, where it was fun to poke at stereotypes and and make 
and and not just poke at stereotypes, but make stereotypes the norm, right? That was kind of the way that that I always looked at it. And it's why I didn't want to, I mean, my, my first real pushback against that sort of stuff was essentially to take the stereotypes and flip it around. That's that's what I did as a younger comic because I just got sick of it. Uh, and it's and it, again, it's like it's not something that I say that oh well, comedy all should all be this. No, com the thing about the beautiful thing about comedy is there are no rules to this game. It's it's just do you want to be a decent person with your humor or not? You can disparage minorities if you want, but you're gonna get pushback for it because the the zeitgeist of the world is moving away from misogyny and racism and xenophobia and bigotry and hyper-nationalism and all of that kind of shit. I think, you know, the article that I read talks about conservative comedy being far-right comedy uh, is not going anywhere. And part of the reason why this person wrote the article, uh, it, you know, halfway through, it becomes evident that they were attacked by 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 a far right group. I've criticized comedian. I've, I've criticized Bill Burr and Chappelle and what have you. Um, when I feel like people in those positions need to be criticized, and they absolutely can and should be criticized when they fuck up. Um. And I've gotten pushback, but never enough to to write a scathing article that says all conservative comics are dog shit human beings that believe in the extermination uh, of anybody that's not Anglo-Saxon and white and Christian. Because that's that's an over exaggeration of a statement. I think conservative comics want to go back to the old days where they can just make jokes about the 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 the. the stereotypes and the low-hanging fruits are just acceptable pieces of comedy and they don't have to dig deeper into themselves they can live on the surface level and that's okay but i think the sensibility of the audience is growing i used to get that all the time right whenever i would go on stage and somebody wouldn't like what i say or if i bombed on stage they would they would look at me and they go well audi you know th that's not what the audience wants to hear well the tables have turned a decade later now you're the thing the audience doesn't want to hear. And, and you know, you told me that I had to change who I was in order to fit your paradigm. I just didn't. And because I didn't, I ended up moving with the audience. The audience eventually came along with me. I, I'm using this as a broad stroke here, but... I do think that the audience has moved a little bit further to the left. Have, have they moved beyond neoliberal <laughs> neoliberalism? Because I, I do think that there is a neoliberal takeover of comedy as well with people like John Oliver and Stephen Colbert and Trevor Noah pushing more of these neoliberal uh, you know, philosophies on their program where they don't really make fun of anybody but the Republicans or, or they don't delve deeper into economic issues or they don't you know, talk about pro-worker stuff. Again, not saying that that's a requirement, but if you're going to have a political show that's considered progressive and for the people, then maybe you should talk about topics that are for the people and not advertiser friendly because your job as a comedian is to push back against the establishment and against the status quo, especially when the status quo is oppressive. That's my viewpoint. But I think some of these cons these more conservative comics, and, and this is my experience with them, is they want to live back in that old era where they don't have to dig a little deeper that poking fun at your poking fun at your wife and being misogynistic and being a little racist was acceptable. And now we're moving beyond those paradigms and they don't know what to do. Evolve. Evolve. That's what you can do. Or don't. Right. Or figure out who you are as a person. And if you are someone that is a little more racist and misogynist, then do that. Be that person on stage and see what happens and see how many people really want to support you. I'm not for getting rid of these comics. You know, I'm not for like, let's censor them and cancel them and whatever. No, no, no. Be who you are. If you're going to be a racist, misogynist piece of shit, then I want to know that you're a racist, misogynist piece of shit for real. <laughs> Not go hide in your little corner, right? 
but I do think that conservatism in comedy is, um, the, the, you know, the low hanging fruit. Let's talk about anything but politics kind of and disparage minorities that that version of conservative comedy, which I'm not saying is the version of conservative comedy either, by the way. That is phasing out. And you know it's phasing out because those are the people pushing back and calling political correctness because you can't go on stage uh, and say the N-word about black people anymore. So, okay, let me look at a few comments before we wrap things up. Uh, have you seen conservative comics in England? They do not punch down. They're actually funny. Uh, they do shows with leftist comics and even considered uh, a friend. I have not. Uh, if you have some recommendations, Todd, please feel free to put them in the comment section because I would love to check them out. I would love to watch some conservative comedy from um, from England. The last comic out of England I saw, uh, Daniel Sloss, I believe his name was. I really enjoyed that show. It was very, very interesting. Two, two specials. It's the last English comic that I that I saw. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm always down for new comedy specials, guys. Uh, so uh, Dennis Miller, Tim Allen, they made me sad. <laughs> Dennis Miller is weird. Uh, his his transformation is is rather strange. Uh, and Todd points out Miller always punched down. Yeah, even when he was doing SNL, I think he was punching down and making fun of people and things of that sort that sort of stuff. Uh, we just didn't realize that in the 80s. Yeah, because it was the norm in a in the 80s, right? When you go back, some of these specials don't hold up because because some of their jokes are just like, you know, the cultures moved beyond what the joke was. When you when you do a joke that stands still in culture, that's where it belongs. It doesn't move forward with anything else. Oh, uh, Jeff Norcutt and Al Murray do conservative comedy with r racism, sexism, or punching down. Uh, are those British comics, Todd, or are those American comics? Because I have not heard of either of them. Uh, the idea of conservative comedy is mistaken for cheap comedy. I Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with English conservatism. Um, oh, uh, you're, you're saying Jeff Norcutt and Al Murray... Do not use racism, et cetera, in your thing. Oh, I see what you're saying. So those are two of the comics you would recommend to go check out. Uh, to go back to this, uh, yeah, I, I think I think that that is you're you're right. It does get mistaken for cheap comedy, but I think in America it's pushed as that. Uh, when you look at the the blue collar comedy tour, when you look at people like Jeff Dunham, they do the low hanging fruit jokes, they do the low brow comedy jokes, they do the racism sexism thing. Um, and people laugh at it, right? And they go, oh, but he's got a silly accent or or look at the puppets. The puppets are the thing. Um, I, I, I don't think that is the perfect example, but I think that's the American conservative um, comedy that people watch. I, I will say somebody like Kevin James, I think, is a conservative comedy uh, comic. But it's very subtle in the way that he approaches his his conservatism. Uh, one of the specials, he talks about what it is to be a man. That's a very conservative ideology. Building things and being a you know buff dude that knows how to fix everything. That's, that's what a man used to be. I know how to fix some things, but I'm not going to say that I'm well-versed in tools. But again, the definitions of those are changing, and he's challenging the changes in the definition. It wasn't a bad joke. Philosophically, I disagree with it, but I like the mechanics of the comedy behind it. If you guys haven't figured out, I'm a huge fucking comedy nerd. <laughs> uh, and and Jeff, once again, I'm going to put these names up. Uh, Jeff Norcutt and Al Murray. Those are the two that Todd are suggesting. I will definitely check those folks out, Todd. Thank you for pointing those out to me. Um, because I, I do, I do enjoy the British comics a lot, a, a lot as well. And, and I don't, I don't, uh, absorb them as, as, as frequently as I would, uh, I would like to. Um, but let's, I'm going to double check. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. 
they often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.